When you're a small YouTuber like us, every new subscriber counts. So today I'll be tackling a project that focuses on that mentality, a live subscriber counter powered by the Raspberry Pi. This project was a bit of a journey, so stay tuned. I would be misleading you if I told you that this was the first time I've attempted to do this project. Actually, a few months back, I created a working sub counter using this Raspberry Pi, but in the time between then and now, this Pi is actually defective for whatever reason. Thankfully, we still had another Pi 3 Model B on hand, so we can still make this video. So in front of me, I have a fresh install of the Raspbian OS on this micro SD card, which we were able to set up just by plugging it into a full-size SD card adapter, and then hooking it up to a computer, and then formatting it, and then installing the Raspbian OS. All you'll need from a hardware point of view is the Raspberry Pi 3, a seven segment display. This is one from Adafruit with four digits that you can get ones with more digits if you have more subscribers, and then some female to female jumper cables. Something to keep in mind is that you will need a soldering iron to solder the header pins onto the seven segment display itself. Figuring out which pins to connect from the 7 segment display to the Pi itself is a pretty simple thing to do. There's several diagrams online that you can find that show what each pin does. All you'll need to wire up is ground, 5 volts power, and then two data pins. As I'm clearly not the first person to think of this idea, there's several programs that people have already made in Python that can be ran on the Raspberry Pi to do very similar things to what I'm trying to do. None of the other projects I've found, however, have been tailored to this specific seven segment display from Adafruit. So what we're going to have to do is find some sort of program that was tailored to a different type of display and kind of jank our way in to make it work with this seven segment display. Although this is technically my second time trying to make this project, the first time through from a coding point of view was a little bit messy in terms of all the libraries and stuff that you need to install. So we'll see how this goes. I installed all of the libraries that I'm going to expect that I will need, but I'm sure that I missed one or two. I'll figure that out later. The point is right now I need to figure out what our channel ID is and get an API key from the Google API. And then from there, I'm going to put it into um, this program that I'm starting out with. This isn't for the correct seven segment display. So I'm gonna kind of jank it together with um, some of my own code and see if I can get it working, but I'll keep going from there. And the first row block. We don't have HTTP library two, whatever the f it's called. Um, so I need to install that, and then I'm probably gonna get another one of these messages, and then another, and another, and another. So I'm not, I'm not gonna make a clip of me complaining about it every single time it happens. I'm just gonna tally up how many times this happens. So uh, I'll keep going. <laughs> It's not working, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's not going well. <laughs> it's not. There's there's pip, okay? Which is what you use to install things on Linux or, or Debian, okay? But <laughs> then there's something within it called ensure pip, which is a component of something that I need, which I have installed and updated. Though it does not think I have it. In <laughs> Fine. Fine. I'll, I'll I'll do what you're telling me. We're gonna restart the computer. I got this. I got this working the first time in like a matter of two days, and I I spent like two hours on it each day, but I wasn't 100% focused. And now I'm I'm having all sorts of things I did not have the first time. What do you mean no module named data for your GPIO? What do you mean? So why don't you just Google? What do you mean? Like those rubber dome switches. 
They're not. They're, they don't feel that great, do they? <laughs> no. Yeah, this. And sure, Pip. I keep getting this here with, with tons of other things. And whenever I look it up, I don't get a good solution. Okay, so after all those headaches, we finally figured it out. Um, I had to just stop for a second. I let Chris take over for a bit. Um, there was something called Insure PIP, which we're inferring is something that checks that you have PIP installed, which is literally just an installer for Python. Um, and we kept getting error messages related to that, but there was no way to enable it. And so we literally just went into the setup file and deleted the line that checked for um, pip using ensure pip. And sure enough, it worked the first time and all of the wiring was correct because it is running through the example program. Um, and I think it's just stuck on the last number here. There you go. All right, so by the lighting, you can probably tell that it's been a long time since the last clip we shot. And that's because it has. It's been four hours since we began recording this video, but we have something to show for it. It's working. So from a coding point of view, this is actually very, very easy to do. That part only took me about 15 to 20 minutes since, as I already said, it was just combining two programs that already existed together. One of them was just a sample seven segment display program that just ran through a bunch of numbers. But essentially what I needed to grab from that was just the setting and changing of numbers for the seven segment display itself. And then for the subscribe count, I need to just check how many subscribers the YouTube channel has itself. So from that, I just grabbed from somebody else who did a similar project to me, but theirs was for a LCD instead of a seven segment display. So I just replaced all the LCD code with some of the sample code that I found in the seven segment file. If I didn't explain that well, I left the Python code below in the description if you're planning on doing this project yourself or you'd just like to see what I went along with. Bear in mind that code is not all mine, it's borrowed from a few different sources, so I can't take all the credit for it. Overall though, I'm very happy with how this project came out and I'm really just happy that we're done because it's obviously been so long. But that being said, I would be interested in making a part two for this video, so if you enjoyed it yourself, make sure to leave a like and let me know because there is an enclosure I could make potentially 3D printed for this project and that would be another interesting video. That's it for this one though, so if you've made it this far, consider subscribing. But for now, see you next week.